Okay, hello and welcome to this video demonstrating required practical nine, which is yeast and its activity decolorizing uh, methylene blue. So it's a respiration practical where we're assessing how quickly electrons generated from respiration in yeast can decolorize um, methyl blue. All I'm going to do here is exactly what you would do in the lab. I'm going to follow through all these instructions, right, which you can see on the screen beside me. Go through this and demonstrate to you how you would do this practical in a lab while you're doing it for yourself. Okay? So first thing, I've got everything I need. I've set everything up nice and neatly. I've got my pre-made uh, active yeast culture here that I've just taken out of a water bath. It's been um, getting active at about 30 degrees C. You can see how active that is because it's got so much um, foam on the top, so it's already respiring very accurately. I've got the water bath here, which I need to be manually monitoring to be the right temperature. Okay, and then I'm looking down at the first instructions on the uh, method. So use the beaker, set up a water bath at either 55 or 45 degrees C. Okay, now I'm doing the 45 degrees C, and the water bath's going a little bit cool. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to add a bit more hot water. I'm going to do that periodically to bring the temperature back up to 45. And yes, that is raising the temperature very nicely. That kettle has just boiled before we started. So, first thing I need to do is shake the yeast and glucose mixture. Well, of course, I've been mixing that. I'm going to throw it all around the place. But as you can see, that is highly active, highly oxygenated, highly aerated yeast. So that is ready to go. Um, right, number two. Set up a control tube of 2 ml of yeast and 2 ml of water. That's for you to compare to. So, there's my 2 ml of yeast. Here's my little syringe of 2 ml of water. I'm going to put that in, like that. And that's my standard for what the experiment should look like when it's finished. Okay, so that's what I'm going to be comparing to. And one of the issues of this experiment, as we'll discuss afterwards, is the subjective nature of this experiment. Okay, so that's in there ready to go for our, uh, our comparison. Right, next, label tubes one to five. Well, I've done that and I've popped them in there. Now, you should have seen me labeling up tubes. It's not something I do often anymore. It's barely legible. I think I can work out which one's supposed to be which, but they're all labeled up and in, okay? Right, add two centimeters cubed of the yeast solution uh, and glucose mixture to all five tubes. So top tip for this experiment, keep one syringe just for the yeast. Okay, so what I really need to do is go into my little stock here, make sure I'm actually in the liquid, not in the foam. Draw that up to two mil, making sure there are no little air bubbles in there. And then go into one of my tubes and pop that in. Okay, and I need to make sure that is at the same temperature as the tubes that I'm trying to use. So I'm going to pop that into my water bath to bring that up to either 55 or 45 degrees C, depending on which temperature you're doing to start with. Um, once I've done that five times, place all tubes in the water bath. Now, I've already done that in true Blue Peter fashion. Here's one I made earlier. So we've got our tube number one with our yeast warming up. That's been in there for a while, so that should be at the same temperature as the water bath, which in this case is 45 degrees C. Okay, so, um, Next one, make sure the water bath stays at the right temperature. Yep, maybe it's a degree cool, so I might add just a little splash more hot water to bring that temperature up. Okay, lovely. Then the next one, we need to pre-warm the methyl blue. So this is the methyl blue. Now it looks a lot weaker than the stuff you would have used as a stain to do a, a micros microscope practical, and that's because it is. Because obviously one of the variables here is the concentration of the stain. Too high a concentration, you won't produce enough electrons to get it to decolorize in anything like a reasonable amount of time. Okay, so this has been diluted, and if any technical or teaching staff are watching, we found that half the recommended concentration, even on the method of sheets for this practical, is what gets you the best, most reasonable, most measurable results. So that's why that looks so weak there. Hopefully you can see that nice and clearly on the video. Okay, now I've taken a bunch of that already and I've started to warm it up to the temperature of the water bath. That is so that when I add the, uh, the stain to this, it doesn't drop the temperature of the yeast. Again, that is another variable. And then the next bit is the bit where I need to be 
a little bit speedy, okay? So it says here, add two centimeters cubed of warm methyl blue to each test tube, immediately bung and shake the tubes for 10 seconds and replace the tubes in the water bath, start the timer. Now I don't have five hands or 10 hands, so I can't do this all at the same. So I'm gonna do a really important scientific uh, process here for any sort of this lab work is what's called staggered addition. So I'm gonna add maybe two Right, I'm going to shake them, I'm going to start the stop clock. I'm going to put those down, I'm going to prepare myself for the next ones, measure out the methyl blue, and then at maybe 20 seconds, right, I'll add those in. Then I'll know for tubes two and three, I just deduct 20 seconds off the time at the end. Okay, that way all of them get a nice accurate measurement of their time without the delay of me having to put in the, the two centimetres cubed of methyl blue and give them the 10 seconds of shaking, okay, because I am not that quick. I have to do five at the same time. Okay, these now, I am hoping, are all at the right temperature. I can see my five tubes there. I've got the methyl blue here. I am going to use a uh, plastic pet, which isn't actually a brilliant measuring device. Really, these ones here, these guys, are far more accurate. But due to the fact this is a very narrow tube, okay, and I need to actually be able to reach the stain, that's what I'm going to use in this instance. So let's go. Right, so... Make sure I've got two. Hold the pressure there. Pop that into, into the first tube. Bung. Give that a shake. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Start, stop, stop, put that in. Right, now I need to get into a rhythm. So I need to get my Two centimetres cubed up, ten seconds, in it goes, bung, shake, shake, shake. Eight, nine, ten. So that one's 25 seconds later. So we're waiting for 50 seconds for the next one. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Pop that in there. So now it's a minute and fifteen. We're aiming for the next one. And in we go. One, two, three, four, five. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And then there we go. for as long as they take to decolorize, okay? But in true Blue Peter fashion, I have a, here's one I made earlier. If I can rummage through and find that one, which is this fella here. So your stopping point, of course, you compare that to that. Now I know those are not exactly the same color, right? But you're gonna to have to make that decision yourself as to when this is uh, decolorized, as to when this has lost its blue color, okay? And that's the point at which you stop your stop clock, okay? So checking back on these, there's immediately been an amount of decolorization going on, but you have to keep checking them, keep monitoring that temperature until you get full decolorization, until we end up with them looking like our standard, like so, Keep comparing, keep comparing, until we get a complete decolorization. Now, one of the tasks you're expected to do here is to measure uh, when they've come to the end and also think of other ways that you could make this practical better or perhaps do a better practical. Now, you should know there's one piece of equipment that you definitely could use in this instance, which of course would be a colorimeter. 
right? And you can think about how you would use that. And perhaps, given what this yeast looks like, why we aren't actually using that straight off and why we're relying on a subjective judgment. Okay? As far as your alternative methods go, well, there's a clue here. Look at all these bubbles. Is this something measurable right, that you could think about? And how would you do that? Okay? So that's the practical. Of course, you do that once at 45 degrees C, once at 55 degrees C. Get as many results as you can because, of course, you have to do a statistical test on this. Times are not really what we're after. We're after rates. Okay? So we do 1 divided by the time to get a rate of the inverse of the time, and then that is what you use to put into your statistical test. Okay, so I hope that's all clear. These ones are losing colour, but they're not quite there. Okay, have a look at the table of data um, that's provided and in the subsequent video for the kinds of times that you can expect for this experiment, and I hope that's all clear as to how I've done that and why I've done it in that way. Okay, thanks very much. So hopefully you can see these tubes here. We're some minutes later. As you can see, look, here are our sort of standards down this end. That's our standard there. And that's our one of our tubes that has fully changed to the other one. It has changed, uh, got rid of that blue colour. Now you can see this has not been a fully reliable experiment in terms of not all of them have gone. But that's why we do multiple repeats and we can remove anomalies. You also might be able to see, if we look carefully, that these are still blue at the top, okay? Some of the blueness is still there at the top, more so than at the bottom, where it's interfacing with the gas above. And you might be able to think more, rich, more richly, more sophisticated question about this method. Why is it that the yeast at the top, which is interfacing with the gas, the, the part of the tube with the air in it, is actually less likely to go clear than the rest, okay? So have a think about that. And that's the experiment. Thanks very much.